Uh, my name is Mike Adams, and I'm a professor at UNC Wilmington and a faculty member here at Southern. I've taught uh, for seven years at Summit, and actually the first two years that I taught, it was just, uh, I think I did one session back in 08, and then three sessions in 09, and then Doc asked me to come and spend the whole summer uh, out at Summit teaching, since I don't have a real job as a professor, we only have a nine-month contract, so it's worked out beautifully. This is my uh, fifth full summer out at Summit Ministries. Well, it's great. Obviously, it's Colorado. It's a combination of just the beauty of uh, the summer uh, in Colorado and the wonderful community, obviously, and the opportunity to have students that actually read uh, that are homeschooled and they're used to reading as opposed to my students at the secular university. That can be a problem uh, sometimes, but also it's been an escape. Also, in a sense, I've been involved in a seven-year litigation against the university, and now um, after having a successful jury trial, it's just nice to be here and to hang out and enjoy things. But um, it, uh, the environment speaks for itself. It's wonderful. Scott and I became friends out at Summit, uh, Scott Klusendorf, a few years ago. And we've coordinated things where he does two hours on abortion and we wait a few days and then I do a third hour. Mm -hmm. And he lays the moral framework as only he can do. And what I do is I come back with five or six arguments and I demonstrate how uh, their arguments, pro-choice arguments, and I demonstrate how the individual making the argument is making the same mistake over and over again. In one conversation, you can hear five or six different pro-choice arguments where they make the same error five or six times in a row, simply assuming that the unborn are not human, you know, my body, my choice, when they talk about back alley abortions. Well, we have to stop back alley abortions. There were thousands of women dying per year from back alley abortions in the 60s. Actually, it's not true, but we don't even have to argue the number because there's a fundamental flaw that's going on that they're not thinking about. You're willing to kill 55 million babies in order to save thousands of women from dying from back alley abortions? That doesn't make sense unless that number 55 million is really zero in their minds because they're assuming it's 55 million blobs of tissue, not human beings. So you see what they're doing over and over and over again. Uh, the idea that, you know, we need to reduce crime or poverty or handicaps by abortion, all of those arguments, no one would say that we need to get rid of handicaps by killing handicapped people. They assume they're not people. They make the same error over and over and over again. So I teach the students how to go right back to the central question immediately and uh, just work them through the flaws in their reasoning. And it's fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> I would just strongly encourage them to avoid initially making biblical arguments with people and avoid the, uh, the emotion and uh, Make sure that you stay in the driver's seat by asking questions like, what are the unborn? And uh, finding out what their position is. And what you find out frequently is that they haven't really thought about it. Uh, they're begging the question on the central issue, which is, what are the unborn? They simply assume that they're not human. But they often, people who are pro-choice in the issue, haven't really decided exactly uh, uh, why they believe what they believe. And uh, that's one of the things we do here. We not only give students' content information, obviously substantive information, but also uh, tactical techniques for getting in the driver's seat. And that's important when you're at a secular university and you're surrounded by people um, who hold a different point of view in a hostile environment. You've got to learn to be very parsimonious in your arguments, and you've got to learn to get down to the central question. And ident we certainly identify what that is here at Summit. We do a very good job of that. We know what we're arguing about. <laughs> Oh, well, people uh, frequently say, well, it's just a blob of tissue. You know, my body, my choice, and it's just a blob of tissue. There's only one body that's uh, involved. And so, you know, we had Scott Klusendorf speaking today on the topic, and he always starts with a short film. And it's not really graphic, but it shows exactly what's going on at the different developmental stages. And, you know, I call this generation, this generation is called a lot of different things, but... I call it uh, Generation U, the ultrasound generation. Why are they more pro-life than other generations? It's because 
their whole lives, they've lived in an era where we have ultrasound technology. Um, in the 80s, back when I was in college, you, you could tell us, uh, you know, it's just a blob of tissue. We had no real way of responding to that. Sure, we had the silent screen, but since then, the technology has become more refined. The picture of the truth has become clearer and clearer, and um, it's just added some effective tools to our arsenal, basically. So important for us, by the way, to, to argue mm -hmm. Uh, that topic from a philosophical and a medical mm -hmm. standpoint, not just relying upon religion as a way of reaching the lost. Mm -hmm. uh, the truth is on our side, so we can argue it from uh, a lot of different angles. Mm -hmm.